All right, for number 11, we're asked to find the range given the domain 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4 when f of x is equal to x minus 2 quantity squared. This question is actually quite easy. All this question means is that plug in 0 for x, then find out what the y is, then plug in 1 for x, find out what the y is, plug in 2 for x, and so on and so forth. So we're going to start by plugging 0. So that means f of 0 is equal to, and then 0 minus 2 squared. So 0 minus 2 is negative 2. Negative 2 squared is 4, positive 4. So we're going to start our R, that's our range, okay, and for 0 we get 4. Now let's plug in 1. f of 1 is 1 minus 2 squared. 1 minus 2 is negative 1. Negative 1 squared is positive 1. So we get 1. f of 2 is 2 minus 2 squared. Oops. So 2 minus 2 is 0, 0 squared is 0. We usually put uh, domain and range in numerical order, so we'll have to um, clean it up um, in a minute. We'll um, put it in numerical order, but just for now. Um, f of 3, that means plug in 3 for x, that's 3 minus 2 squared. That's 1 squared, which is 1. 1 is already listed in our range. Um, so um, we don't have to relist it. Okay, now let's find f of 4. f of 4 is 4 minus 2 squared. 4 minus 2 is 2. 2 squared is 4, and 4 is already listed as well. So let's now put our range in numerical order, in um, ascending order, going from least to highest, so that's 0, 1, and 4, and that's our answer. So this question is actually, was actually, hopefully you would agree with me that it was easy. Okay, um, the second um, one, number 12, asks us, it gives us f of x as being the absolute value of 2x plus 1, and g of x as x plus 4. Actually, it's x minus 4 in the question, so let me just change that. Oh, well, I'm just going to change it here on the question. x minus 4 is what the question said. Okay, um, so So to answer the first part, which is f of g of 1, we always do the inside first. That means we're going to find g of 1. Okay, so g of 1, let's do that on the side here. Okay, we're first going to find g of 1. That means go into the function that's called g, that's this one, and plug in 1 for x. So that would be 1 minus 4, which is negative 3. Now, we're going to find f of g of 1. Well, g of 1 is negative 3, so in replace of putting g of 1, we're going to put negative 3. So we need to find f of negative 3. f of negative 3 means going to the function that's called f, that's this one, and wherever you see x, put negative 3. So absolute value of 2 times negative 3 plus 1. So order of operations tells us to multiply 2 by negative 3 first, that's negative 6. And then we're going to do the inside, negative 6 plus 1 is negative 5. An absolute value of negative 5 is 5. So that's f of negative 3. 
absolute value of negative 5 is positive 5. Okay, so that's, so 5 is f of g of 1. So that's the answer to part 1. Now we're going to do part 2. Part 2 is find g of f of 1. So we're going to do we're going to do the inside first. The inside is f of 1. We're going to find out what f of 1 is. That means we go into the function f the function f is 2 times the absolute value, I mean absolute value of 2x plus 1. So wherever we see x, we're going to put 1. So 2 times 1 is 2, plus 1 is 3, absolute value of 3 is 3. That's the inside, f of 1. So we need g of f of 1. That means we need g of 3, because f of 1 ended up being 3. g of 3 means go into the function, that's g, that's the x minus 4 function, and wherever you see x, put 3. So that's 3 minus 4, which is negative 1. So the second part, which is g of f of 1, that gives us negative 1.